So I'm listening to this book by Dr. Wayne Dyer. It's called, What Do You Really Want for Your Children? And he talks about pretty controversial stuff. Well, not controversial, but controversial if you were having this conversation with my husband. And usually I would, I would run away from this kind of conversation, but I decided that I was going to encourage my husband to uh, watch, the, watch the book or listen to the book or read the book and then your backpack and then he could have a lot of food for thought to have these deep powerful conversations with me about them and one of the conversations was about behavior and loving your kids as who they are and then separately loving them and uh, letting them know that certain behaviors have certain consequences and certain rewards. And usually my husband would conflate the two. If someone's behavior is out of line, then he will cut them off. And so we gave the example of a plate. Like, if Austin or Ava dropped a plate, would you tell them that they were bad? Or would you say, hey, are you okay? Did you cut yourself? Um, make sure you don't climb on the table because you can get hurt. And I love you. Um, you know, are you okay? And then remember next time, like, don't drop the plate because, uh, or you climb on the table and drop the plate or whatever, then you might uh, cut your foot and we don't want you to hurt yourself. And that's also why we don't climb on the table. And, and ever it's just like, if, if he dropped the plate, he would be very angry with himself. And, and I said, why? Like, why would you be angry about yourself? Why would you not instead say, ask yourself, like, how did you get to the point where you dropped a plate? Like, what was the story behind it? Because you know yourself as a person who doesn't drop the plate. So if you did the drop the plate, did you have too much caffeine that day? Did you have enough sleep? Like, what, what was it that had you actually dropped the plate? You know, it was more questioning, more digging, more understanding to be had. Oh, Ava's showing you. Austin's lunchbox, which Ava's also calling a backpack. 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 Can you say lunchbox? Backpack. Want a lunchbox? Hmm? Lunchbox. And, and so I, I, I would like to challenge you with the question whether you believe that do you separate the two or do you conflate the two? Like growing up, I thought that if I did the right things, then I would impress my parents. That's part of the reason why I got my master's in accounting. Because I thought if I got a master's degree, then at least my, my parents would be proud of me. And why was I not okay with my parents loving me for me? And it didn't matter what accomplishments I made. And sure, they, they want the best for me. Like, they desire that I have a very hopeful, hopeful future, and they desire that I have success with what I do. But do they love me less if I had a future that wasn't according to their standard? Or would they simply be, like, separate out the two and know that my successes or my perceived failures were one thing, and that they still loved me anyway because of who I am, that I'm their daughter, and they love me. And... They may get it, but did I get it? Like, I was terrified of my dad. Like, I was terrified of, like, messing up. I was terrified of pissing them off. I was terrified of disappointing them. I was terrified of so many things. And and I didn't realize that my happiness was a choice. And it didn't depend on what I accomplished or where I was at in my life or if my parents were proud of me. But merely, was I okay with myself? Did I love myself? Did I consciously make a choice to be happy and I realized like that's what I want for my kids to teach them that they are whole and they are complete and they are perfect just the way they are simply because of who they are and the fact that they exist and two some behaviors are supported and encouraged and some behaviors have terrible consequences and they get to choose what behaviors they engage in i think my husband comes more from the school of thought of like aristotle who said 
you are what you repeatedly do, meaning your habits and your actions really build your reputation and also affect how you live and affect who you are. And which I think is really important, but I also think it's just as important to remember that they're two separate things. Failing at something doesn't make you a failure. It means that you failed at something. Like Edison, when he was trying to make this battery, he tried like 2,000 ways to like make the battery that didn't work, and then he finally figured out a way to make a battery. And when people ask you, ask him, like, what do you think about all this failure? What do you think about all this time spent on the 2,000 failures? He goes, I don't see them as failures. I see them as 2,000 ways. I know 2,000 ways how to not make a battery. And that's so profound. You know, we learn so much from our failures, our perceived failures, our mistakes. And it helps us grow as a person. It helps us try out different things and tweak our our tweak our practices and truly learn about what we're capable of and what works for us and what doesn't. And it, it's, it's such a different way to live. I think it's empowering and I think it's the way to teach our kids to live is to not conflate the two things together and think they're one and the same, that they're judged only by their actions or judged only by their accomplishments, but rather know that they are deeply loved, they are whole and complete and perfect just the way they are, and they get to choose what actions to take and what consequences they like to foster and what behaviors and habits they would like to engage in to shape uh, their everyday life and how their quality of their life is. And whether they choose to be happy or they think they have to do something outside of themselves and find the happiness out there. <laughs> Great food for thought, right? I'm looking forward to sharing with you all my conversations with Everett about further topics that he may not agree with. And I will see what your opinion is, and I will seek out your opinion and see what you think about it. So, happy Friday, and I send you love, light, and food for thought. Profound, meaningful, deep feeling, profoundly powerful and meaningful conversations about the things that really matter to you. And um, if you do not have a life coach and you're looking to shift your life and live a infinitely powerful life, deeply meaningful, profoundly uh, fulfilling, I think I said that already, uh, that's where I come in. I'm a life coach. I help you get access to all that wonder. I help you access that thing, your power, to do the thing that you came here to do. The one that resonates to the depths of your soul. The one that allows you to live a deeply meaningful, fulfilled life because you choose to. You choose to operate from your soul's purpose and your soul's alignment. Um, so when you're ready and you're at that stage in your life, you're ready to hire a life coach, you're ready to make some shifts in your life, you're ready to live a deeply meaningful, incredible, infinitely powerful life, come talk to me. Check out my website, soulelevatedlife.com. Check out my YouTube channel, watch some old videos, see if I resonate with you, see if I'm for you, or you can simply talk with me. We can get on a conversation, see if I'm for you. I can see if you are for me, and we'll go from there. And we'll possibly start our coaching relationship, and you'll be on your way to living a deeply powerful, meaningful life. Sending you, uh, here's to you living a soul-elevated life, and I'll see you tomorrow.